Hello and welcome to Kev's Shed once again. Here I've got a, a log that I've uh, brought over to my shed and I want to uh, I want to turn it down, and make it into a plinth. But the question is, how do I turn this when I can't fit it onto my lathe? It's much too heavy, too big. I've got a couple of ideas and I'll try that. It might work, it might not work, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the idea is that I make discs bigger than the diameter of the this tree which is about 340 millimeters so if I make a disc say five or even 600 wide and then I have a piece of wood going across there and I attach my turbo plane to that up and down I should be able to get a nice radius that's the idea I want to make the the top um, at right angles to the to the log before I cut. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I've I've propped it up till I've got it vertical and I checked it with a plumb bob, and till it's relatively vertical. Now I'm just going to add a pencil to a spot say here, and then rule a, a line to make it uh, nice and accurate. Let's say there. I know it's getting a bit crazy, but um, this is what I've done. All right, so here I have the the bracket that I made up for the uh, leveling jig that you may have seen in a previous video. It's just made up out of some uh, uh, box steel, a uh, couple of wing nuts, and uh, on my jig for leveling uh, flat wood, I just raise this up and down um, in the frame that I made, but. I'm going to use it this time. I'm just going to connect it to a board like so. I've got it wedged onto this this piece of wood. And what I'm going to do now is I I probably didn't allow enough uh, enough uh, room with these discs. Uh, they're 600 wide. I figured I had enough room to fit this, but I I didn't really look at the uh, the distance on this. But it just fits at the lowest point. So I'm just going to clamp that onto this board, in the middle of this board, so I can move from side to side, resting on these um, discs that I've got at either end. So now I'm just going to put a clamp here, and that'll be it. And uh, I'll see if it works. So just tighten that up here. So the idea is that you tighten it to the lowest position that you're going to be in, which just happens to fit. and. Uh, now I'll machine it down. I've made a couple of mistakes. One is this top bar here is too long and so that when I get to the end I can't go past here without it hitting on the ring on the end. So that needs to be shorter. I might have to cut that down. But otherwise it seems to be working. The other thing is too, I noticed it, it depends a little bit on your angle. So you can make fine adjustments just by changing your angle. Um, but generally if you try to keep it, this bar parallel with the, the axis, it stays pretty good. But of course, if I drop one side down, then it, it can go lower. So, so uh, it's not perfect, but it's certainly doing a pretty good job. You know, to rotate the log somewhat. That could be a trick. So that's my hack for uh, turning a large log. It does have its limitations. Obviously, a bigger log would be even harder for me to manipulate. So I might have to try and think of a new way to doing that. I suppose if I had something where I could rotate the, the log, if I could get it on, then, then I could do a much larger log. So I'll have to have a little think about that. But uh, in the meantime, I'll just keep going and I'll bring this down to a nice bit of a cylinder. I was going to shape it, but I'm just thinking that when you overlay something like this log with, um, with a nice straight cylindrical shape, you're going to get lots of really interesting grain come out here. So I might even just keep going with that and see what it looks like.
Okay, so I've got it down to a, a really good cylinder now. Um, it's worked better than I imagined, actually. Um, of course, this isn't exactly precise, but you can't really tell. There's a few little spots there because it's possible to move the the uh, the guide around a little bit and change the angle. But this method of having uh, a guide and freehand is uh, is really excellent. I, I'm going to try and see if I can make up some other uh, ideas. I think I think I can do a better job than this now. I think I could make a better jig. Um, but even so, I've really enjoyed doing this and I think it, the wood's come up really, really nice. So what I'm going to do now is use the uh, power carving unit with the levelling guide. This is really good for getting a flat surface anyway, so I'm just going to trim it up a little bit with this and then put fine sandpaper on it and, uh, and that'll, be, that'll be it. I'll be able to get a really nice surface. When you superimpose a cylinder onto the log, it's amazing the colours and the, the grain that comes out. It's really quite incredible. It's a beautiful feature. That's perfectly smooth. It looks it looks like it's not, but it is. Beautifully amazing. And beautiful straight edge. The real advantage of the of the leveling guide is it's ability to very finely adjust the level of either using the turbo plane or the sander in this case I'm using the sander and you can you can very very finely adjust it and really really level things off really beautifully and uh, I really like that and it was really useful when doing the outside here too I could I could just finely tune it and then take off any high spots very very quickly it allows you to do very aggressive sanding but without the without the danger of it digging in anywhere because it's always riding on this outside rim. So I find it really useful just for that guiding aspect. Okay, here's the finished column. Um, the, the project isn't finished because as I said, I'm going to, I'm going to put legs on it and use it as a, uh, an end to a, an outside bar. But uh, it is the end of the, of the pack, you know, showing how I can turn using the, uh, the turbo plane. And it's a really nice cylinder. It's very smooth and very round. So that's my wood turning hack. This is a beautiful honey color. All right, this hack uh, involves the turbo plane and the uh, leveling guide and the power unit and it's already turned out to be my most my favorite hack um, because it's so simple um, so I'll just show you here what I've done I've got two pieces of wood which I've cut out with a V like so and a notch so that I can place them on this piece of ply it can be any board and the idea there is that I can vary the, the spacing between them. Now this came about because I was developing a, a jig for turning longer pieces of wood that I couldn't fit onto my lathe. Um, and uh, I suddenly realized that the leveling guide might be very, very useful. And to give you an example of what, what I'm talking about, um, here is a very uh, irregular shaped piece of wood as you can see here it's been split and there's knots on it etc and what I found that with the leveling guide just by placing it into these V's I can set the depth of the leveling guide and then rotate it like so but because it rides on either side uh, of the guide it just evens out all of the bumps and and uh, and edges uh, so you see here if I was to cut here it'll just plane that off and at this end here you can see I've already done it uh, a fair bit here and you can see how nice and smooth it's, it's becoming and it actually evens out all of the formation now in this case I could bring it down to a total uh, um, uh, round shape or I could do an axe shape or whatever a handle shape um, just by focusing on any particular area but what it really does is even out as it goes in this direction um, and and uh, it's in some ways it's a it's a new kind of turning I'm going to call it arbor turning so uh, I'll I'll just do a bit more of this and then I'll actually do a larger piece um, and maybe even something really 
I'd like like something where you can see here it's it's um it's been milled and it's just an end there but once I start to shape it you can get all kinds of nice smooth shaping um so I, I think this is going to be really really handy Now you may notice that it's not cutting very much on the inside, but on the outside it will, so it starts to straighten out this piece of wood. I think the way that um, the way that it averages out the shape, and you can round it to quite round if you want, would be very good for stick furniture and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm just going to put the sander on it now, just to finish off a little bit of that edge there, so you can see it can be used with the sander as well as the. Uh, I don't know whether you notice that it's only taking off the high high part, and that's what averages it out. So let's try that. So that's not a split piece of wood, but it'd be great for doing axe handles or something like that. So I'm going to now uh, do a, a much larger piece that's uh, already fairly round, but, but unusual shape in length. What I really like is the idea that I could, I can make it nice and round and machined looking um, and even out those bumps. Well, it's very quickly coming down to a very nice pole um, and quite elegant sort of curves in it, which are the, you know, the average of the uh, natural curves that were in it. And I'm really quite happy with that. And that's going to be really quite nice. Uh, I'll be using this as a part of a stand for the Viking candelabra. So I've cut it now so that it's roughly, it'll be roughly at head height. The actual Viking chandelier or candelabra will be at about head height. And now what I might do is put it back on the jig and carve it so that it'll look really Viking. What do you think, Chris? It's going to be nice when that's all oiled. Yeah, no, that looks good. It should be awesome. And one ha last hack that I really want to do, looks like I'm not going to have enough time to do it for the uh, Maker Fest, so you'll have to come back to Kev's shed to see this finished. But I'm going to do a hack to turn this lovely lump of she oak into a fully turned bowl, a, quite a thin bowl. Um, it'll look like it's been turned on a lathe, but all I'll be using is the turbo plane and a little jig that I've come up with.
So this is going to be my hack for uh, turning a large bowl. So what I'm doing here is I've got a central shaft which I'm put, putting on now and I've made a little bracket so that this can be screwed on but with hindsight I realized I could just use a shaft a shaft and just drill a hole and just drop it straight in and that becomes a reference point so this kind of turning what we're doing is on normal lathe uh, what one does is they turn the wood they rotate the wood and keep the, the tool steady and in this case what we do is we we will turn the tool keeping the wood steady and that'll allow us to turn much larger things we probably could do with a lathe such as this bowl that I'm about to make this will be the reference for all of the turning and that looks pretty good that way and not too bad that way okay okay so this is the hack that I've uh, come up with to turn a large bowl but essentially it's just a block of wood with a hole in it that matches this piece of steel uh, this steel shaft I've made a little bracket here to screw it on but it's not necessary you can just simply drill a hole and drop a shaft into that hole if you want um, being careful to not go all the way through if you don't want the hole through the bowl okay but uh, in this case I've got it just screwed on like that so this is a block of wood I've screwed on a piece of uh, MDF which is quite thick and quite rigid and uh, if I loosen that off I can adjust the height all right and then this just threads on and because this is a a very flat bowl with a curved edge or it's going to be so I'm going to use the t the uh, the turbo plane fitted to an angle grinder and attached to this bracket and this bracket simply rides on the on the guide and rotates around so obviously I'm going to use a stop position here the blade will be in a certain position and then I'll be able to go around and it will plane or, or machine away the wood in a perfect circle and I'll be able to move it in and level it all the way into about here then the what's left in the in the very middle I'll take away by hand so that'll allow me to turn a perfect bowl and uh, the other side will be done very similarly with this I'm just using a straight template for this but if it was a much taller piece of wood I could use a curved template like this and the uh, turbo plane would then follow around here and do whatever profile that I've, I've worked out to go on it. So what I'm doing is uh, just rotating around. I put a stop in here so that it only goes to a limit. I'm going to keep machining down, just gradually moving down, and then I can move this backwards and forwards, and I'll just eat away the rest of it on the bottom. And that natural curve of this blade will be the, the natural curve of the bowl. However, I can use different shaped templates to create different type surfaces or shapes. Um, and each of the templates you just cut them out, work them out beforehand and cut them out on a bandsaw. This is just out of MDF but you can do it with plywood of course. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite versatile and this is going to be a really nice bowl. <clears throat> well it looks like I won't have this finished in time for the Maker Fest but uh, if you uh, want to tune to Kev's shed later on I'll show you the finished bowl that I've done using this hat which I think is turning out to be really good.